Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of our mobile development series where we create a mobile game from scratch and publish it to Play Store. Since I'm a long time fan of Pokemon, the theme of our game will be a Poké clone based on Greek mythology. Young Hercules is our protagonist and the Poké Center is now called Medical Center. In today's episode we will go over some very cool mechanics and create the base of our custom battle system. When I started the series I thought about recreating a turn-based fight just like in the main games but this topic is covered multiple times across YouTube and isn't really part of mobile game development. Instead I decided to take huge inspiration from Pokemon Go since it's also a mobile game and has a lot of screen tapping while fighting. With that said, our battle system will be a screen touch spamming system where we detect touch inputs and convert them to beautiful attacks. For the battle itself, it's important to have a separate camera that captures only our epic fight. Name it battle cam and change the projection to orthographic. For performance purposes, I also deactivate occlusion culling, HDR and MSAA. We can also get rid of the audio listener since we only need one in our scene. Next, it's smart to have just an empty game object that will work as the parent for all battle involved game objects. For now, our battle cam, and make sure to center the position as well. All of our fight will happen on a separate canvas that will be visible only to our new battle cam. To make that happen, create a new canvas, name it for example battle canvas because how else would you name it? And let's go over some very important settings. First, change the render mode to screen space camera and assign the battle cam to the render camera. Then, you can reduce the plane distance to 5 and also change the sorting order to the canvas layer. That way, we make sure that everything on this canvas isn't covered by other game elements. The next step is to make our canvas adjustable to every screen size because we are on mobile and there are a lot of screen resolutions. The scale mode should be scaled with screen size, the match slider to 0.5 and the reference resolution to 9020 by 1080. Ok, we are done with the setup and it's time to create our first UI object. Just start with a simple image and scale its width and height to match the whole screen. It's important to change these values rather than the scale values in order to prevent unnecessary headache when scaling the rest of the UI objects. To check if the image covers the whole screen, you can click on our battle cam and check the preview window. It looks perfectly white. We have only one problem. The new canvas is on top of our game and we have no clue what's happening behind it. We can't even move the canvas game object, but don't worry, Savu is here to save you. Grab the battle canvas, throw it into the battle handler and ta-da! You can now move the whole thing together and place it wherever you like. Life changing hacks by Savu. This could be a new series, what do you think? Back in Unity, let's change this white background to something more appealing. Red is supposed to be the color of battles and fights, so it should fit. I renamed the image to Battle Background and leave it as it is. It's a temporary placeholder and in the future I will draw a really cool background. After that, we create as a child of the background another image that will represent the player's creature. Make sure to deactivate Reika's target so that our touch isn't blocked by the image. Now, are you ready for a surprise? The two creatures fighting will be Suicune and Entei. Don't worry, they are placeholders as well, but I thought they fit the Greek Pokemon theme very much. At some point I will create custom creatures for the game and if you like, you can suggest some on our Discord. Now for the enemy, all we have to do is to duplicate our creature and change the sprite. They look awesome side by side. About the fight animation, I don't want to go much into detail, creating something very difficult, since this is not the focus of the series, so a quick double jump animation should do the trick. And to be honest, it really looks not bad, I mean, back in the day, Pokemon sprites couldn't even move an inch. With the animation done, we uncheck loop time and a great way to have the same animation for both players is to simply copy and paste the animator component to the other game object. Just one animation for both. Perfect, we are ready to code our battle system. First we code the touch controls that will work on a real mobile device only. 
In the update function, we can check if the player touches the screen with input.touchCount greater than zero. To get the first touch, we create a new touch variable and assign the input.getTouch0, which is the very first touch of the screen. Next, we need to get the touch position, but it must be converted to a vector 3 that we can use in the future. Here, the camera component of our battle cam is required, since our touch position is converted with screen to world point based on our battle cam. We can also set the Z value to 0, since we are on 2D and depth is not of our concern. Of course, we also want to spawn some sort of effect whenever and wherever a touch is happening. Create a public game object and use it to instantiate the effect at the exact position of the touch. Jumping back to Unity, we need to assign the battle cam to the inspector of the script, and we also need to create the effect we talked about earlier. I will skip the 30 minutes that took me to create this easy particle effect and just tell you that you need to save your game object as a prefab in order to use it and instantiate it within script. Reset the position of the prefab and in the render section of the particle system change the sorting layer to canvas and the order to a big number just to make sure that the effect is on top of everything. Ok, we are ready, but for a very disappointing reason, touch inputs don't work within Unity and are only testable on a real device. Looks like you just need to trust me on this and since I'm a good person, I will quickly code a similar script that works in Unity and PC. As I'm doing this, let me tell you that you can get the whole Unity project with all sprites, scripts, animations and everything that's included on itch.io for a very low but highly supportive price. You can also have access to the project by supporting the channel and the series over on Patreon. Both options really help and motivate me to continue working on the project and upload tutorials on the channel. Thank you for making this possible, it means really a lot. Ok, as you can see, our click is now detected and the particle system is also spawned at the right position. One problem though, look at our hierarchy, is full of touch effects that stayed alive and slowed down our game. Back in the day, I wrote a whole new script to handle this, but now, now that I'm big brain, I simply changed the stop action parameter of the particle system to destroy. Fixed. The next step of this episode is to play the animation we created when the touch happens. To access the animator of our creature, we use a public game object and a private animator. In the start function, we assign to the player anim variable the animator of our player's creature. Now the only thing we need to do is to call the animator and set a trigger named attack right after spawning the touch effect. After that, we are ready for the animator. I like to have an empty state as the default state and from there I make transitions to wherever I like. Here it's the attack animation. Create a trigger that has exact the same name as we used in our script and use it for the transition. We don't need exit time and the transition duration should be zero. From the attack animation back to empty we need to know how long the animation is and use a number slightly bigger than that for the exit time. Zero for the transition duration. Lastly, assign the player creature to the script variable and hit play. That's great! We touch the screen, the effect is spawned, the animation is played and next time we will create life bars for the monsters and actually attack our opponent in order to win the battle. Hope you liked the video and if so, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more epic game dev videos like this. Get the project on itch.io, link in description, and for requests about features you want to see next, drop a comment or text me on Discord. With that said, thanks for watching and keep developing until I see you next time. Ciao!